Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be doing um, just like first impressions of Gigabyte's X570S uh, motherboard lineup. So these are just passive X570. Uh, so it's the same old X570 chipset, but now with different new heat sinks um, that are passive, so no fans. Um, and yeah, we're just going to be taking a look at the, the boards because Gigabyte has actually made some further adjustments to the motherboards. Um, cause like actually a lot of the, like some of the components that were used on the original X570 boards are actually not available anymore. So they've had to like, there's VRM upgrades, uh, in, in places in the lineup and, and that kind of thing. But yeah, the, the main feature for a lot of people is like, oh, look, new passive chipset heat sinks. It's still the same chipset. Um, I have seen a lot of confusion from people where it's like X570S is a new chipset. No, it isn't. It's the same kind of deal as like Z370M motherboards or Z370XP motherboards or Z370N motherboards or Z370P motherboards. These are all still using, all of these boards use a Z, regular Z370 chipset, the exact same Z370 chipset. The letter at the end of the chipset name is just like a product uh, naming scheme thing at, that Gigabyte does. So similarly with X570, this is still an X570 chipset. They've just slapped an S on the end of the chipset name to indicate that they've designed new heatsinks for the chipset. That's it. They haven't done anything else to it. It's still the same old X570 chipset as always. Um... So yeah, let's jump jump right into it. The main reason you would want an X570 chipset instead of a B550 chipset, because like X570 costs more and actively hurts BCLK overclocking, not something that you need to worry about for daily usage, but like we, we are on the actually hardcore overclocking channel. And personally, I care about BCLK overclocking a lot because if you're going for memory, like raw memory frequency attempts or just pushing settings for benchmarks, the inability to run more than like 102 BCLK or even 101 BCLK really kind of sucks, you know, as far as I'm concerned. Now, if you're doing a daily system, this doesn't affect you whatsoever. Like, this doesn't matter. You may as well forget that I ever mentioned that X570 can't overclock the BC, like can't do BCLK overclocking, but it's a fact. X570 sucks at BCLK overclocking and... Um, yeah, B550 does that way better. Now, what X570 offers that B550 doesn't do is that you get X PCIe 4.0 through the chipset. So if you have a bunch of PCIe 4.0 SSDs, um, like more than one of them, you re like you need multiple PCIe 4.0 SSDs to for this to actually become relevant. Well, you can run your PCIe 4.0 SSDs through the chipset. You can't do that on B550 because the B550 chipset doesn't support PCIe 4.0. Um, so, yeah, anyway, um, here we have the board. So, VRM upgrade, the old Pro AX, and actually I think this, this happened on a previous revision of the Pro AX already because I believe uh, International Rectifier discontinued the 40 amp power, uh, the IR3553 power stages a while ago. But anyway, this is, this is now up to 60 amp power stages, so uh, the VRM on this board is more powerful than it's, than it's ever been. Um, and uh, they've also upgraded the heatsink. There's more more fins over there. Uh, then, of course, you have no fan in the chipset heatsink. Three M.2 three M.2 slots, all of which are PCIe 4.0 because of the X570 chipset. Uh, solid looking rear I/O. Got Wi-Fi six, I believe. No, we already had that on X570. Two and a half gig LAN. Now, I believe the older version of the board was one gig. Um, and. Uh, Supports active OC tuner. That's new. What is that? Oh, looks like Gigabyte ha copied the dynamic 5% performance increase. <laughs> oh, you gotta love overclocking Ryzen CPUs. I mean, at least they're not lying about it, because that's realistically what it'll do. Yeah, so basically Gigabyte now has the same functionality that S uh, Asus has on the Crosshair 8 Dark Hero. So I guess I'll get a, get to play around with that in the end anyway, uh, except I'll get, uh, like, because I've actually asked Gigabyte if they, they, uh, if they could send over an X570 board, uh, X570S motherboard for testing. Um... So, yeah, though I mostly just wanted to try out the, the, like, the latest iteration of Gigabyte's daisy chain because, 
Like, the one they have on V550 is amazing. And uh, they've, as far as I can tell, they've just been polishing it ever further, as now they ha are claiming XMP up to 5400 plus, which is uh, quite something. Actually, let's check out the memory QVL, because I wonder if that's 5400 plus on APUs, which was always doable. Like, the APUs are insanely good at memory overclocking. Um, or if that's actually... Because, like, if they're doing 5400 plus on CPUs, that's ridiculous. Oh, we don't have that for memory? Really? No memory QVLs? Let's try a different board. This also claims 5400 plus. We're gonna have to... <laughs> support list... Also no memory QVL. Are you kidding me? Do they not have a memory QVL for any of these just right now? There we go. Uh, I've forgotten what the new ones are called. Okay, that's 5100. That's 5200, so it's got to be APUs then. Um... I have compl- why- why can't you just st freaking- Okay, yeah, it's 5400 plus on APUs. Okay, so it looks like they've just changed- yeah, okay. Because the thing is, that board advertises the 5400 plus XMP as well, if you scroll down. Uh, where is it? There, see? XMP 5400 plus, and I guess they've added the active OC tuner to the extreme, which is why we now have a revision 2.0. But, uh, yeah, so that's, I, I'm guessing that's then the same daisy chain that they had on the B550s then, because uh, I can't, because like 5400 in my experience was kind of easy to do. Where's the master? Or actually the Pro V2 would work too. Um, I bet you they don't advertise these as doing 5400 plus. <laughs> oh no, they do. Yeah, okay, so it's still the same daisy chain. Okay, they haven't tweaked that. Or, well, they maybe might have made minor tweaks to it for like better compatibility over time or, or something like that. But evidently the, the max frequency that it does has not been has not been changed significantly cuz yeah like on on B550 with an APU 5400 very easy uh, at least on the 6 layer uh 6 layer B550 boards of 5400 plus very very easy and it looks like yeah the X570 boards are still on uh basically that memory topology i i don't know for sure that they didn't change something but considering that the memory speed support uh, like the memory speed that they're advertising hasn't changed that to me that implies that fundamental like it's probably the same um, so anyway, we've got new VRM, uh, now, I get so frustrated with this, um, so that's not, it's not a 12 phase, so what Gigabyte is doing with this, with the twin, uh, twin, uh, VRM thing, like, they're putting the power stages in parallel, so this is a 6 phase, it just has 12 power stages in it, so you get the power handling capacity of a 12 phase with the, like, control scheme of a six phase um so yeah fundam like there's nothing wrong with this this is actually a perfectly like good way of running a vrm um so i like I, i'm like i the problem i have with this is it's tech it's not technically a 12 phase um so yeah and for the longest time this wasn't an issue with gigabytes like advertising because they just run doublers um, well, actually, the way they ran the doublers, they were basically running as a six-phase anyway, so... I don't know why it is that the motherboard industry decided to advertise, like, phase counts instead of just power stage counts, or, like, VRM channel counts. Because the, the thing is, like, phases in, are, like, how the controller controls the VRM. Um, and you can have a garbage 16 phase. Ask Zotac how to build one of those. Um... <laughs> Or really, if you go back in time on, on motherboard VRM designs, there's some really bad high-phase count VRMs. Um, 
But the thing is, is just like, yeah, so thanks to everybody collectively deciding that we're going to just talk about phases instead of like the actual MOSFETs involved, we now have this lovely situation where it's like, well, this does technically have 12 power stages in it, and it does have 12 inductors in it, so you could configure this as a 12 phase, but I could also configure this as a two phase, or a, one, or a single phase. Um, the controller here is set up as a six. Um, so this is a six phase with 12 power stages, um, more powerful VRM than what the old Pro AX had, and the lower phase count really doesn't have any negative effects uh, on, on the operating uh, actually, especially since the old... Wait, no, this was on International Rectifier in the past. So actually, that was a proper 12 phase in the past, but... Yeah. Like, there's nothing... Like, there's... The thing is, there's nothing wrong with this. It's just, like, that is technically incorrect. There's there's no... Fa like, there's not... These are not out of phase with each other. You don't have 12 different phases. You have six of them. Which is fine. That's a perfectly high, like, honestly, you can build a four phase that's very, very good. It's just far more difficult than building a six phase that's really, really good. Um, well, up to a point. Like, there, there's trade-offs. <laughs> um, anyway, so we've got that. Then we've got the active OC tuner. So that's, that's cool. Um... What else do we have? We have, uh... Oh, I guess they've packed the heat pipe in a bit better into the heat sink. Uh... Got some f funky fin geometry going on. Uh, yep, SSD heat sinks. Smart fan 6. a 24 watt man <laughs> i think they already had that before though so i actually don't know what they changed with smart fan 6 then we have the two and a half gig lan and also google chrome is being super laggy for some reason um so yeah honestly this just looks like a vrm upgrade like th this basically looks like vrm upgrade uh memory actually the old revision 1.1 and 1.2 pro ax would be on the same topology as this so they haven't really like the same memory topology as they had before different heat sinks uh, and then you get the active oc switcher so that's pretty cool but they haven't like uh like this is just a better board than the old x uh, x570 one like that's that's really all there is to say about it um yeah, the interesting thing will be to will be like, does the chipset run any hotter than the like old motherboard's chipset? Um, but I kind of doubt it because the old X, like the thing with the X five seventy S, like the old X five seventy boards that had a fan in the chipset heatsink, like that heatsink had to be hollowed out in order to make room for the fan. So you can make a far more substantial heatsink on the new X five seventy S boards. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's kind of that for this one. Um, it's a Pro AX with with different heat sinks and some extra like an updated feature set basically and an upgraded VRM and it is just straight up upgraded like this will handle more current than the old design did. Um, sure, it has less phases, but that doesn't doesn't really like that really doesn't matter. <laughs> so yeah, let's move on to the next board, which is the X five seventy S Aero G. So this board is new. I Okay, well, we can now see where that heatsink gets its function. Like, oh, man, if you have this horizontally, this is going to, like, suck. In a case, this is fine, because obviously hot air rises, so you'll you'll get uh, convection through that, fin like, the, the back of that heatsink there. But, yeah, on a, on a, like, if I wanted to do one of my lazy thermal tests, I could totally see this not working very well at all. Um, but, um, yeah, so this has... This looks like it's got four M.2 slots. It's off to the connectivity. Okay, now we have two and a half gig LAN. Uh, you get X8. Yeah, so you get... S uh, no, I don't think this has SLI support, which is something I find really annoying. Like, it makes... The thing is, you have to pay NVIDIA for SLI support. Um, so, I totally understand that considering how dead SLI is these days... Uh, nobody really wants to, like, pay NVIDIA for it anymore, but, 
I do find it kind of frustrating, personally. That, like, it's very hard to find motherboards with SLI support. And... AMD Quad Cross, yeah, so they didn't pay for an SLI license. So technically there is a way to like hack the NVIDIA drivers to get SLI running, but uh, yeah, this this is a problem. Like, well, this is potentially a problem if you have like two 3090s or something. <laughs> otherwise it's fine. Um, otherwise it really doesn't affect you. Ultra fast storage. Man, these overly animated websites. Yeah, so you get four M.2 SSDs. So I wonder how that's hooked up to the chipset. Um, so let's check out that English manual. And here we go. So yeah, so all of your PCIe, so you get one from the you get one M.2 slot from the CPU which is standard that you get that on every X570 motherboard then you get uh M so you get one M.2 slot that you can either have two SATA ports or that M.2 slot so that'll be M2D uh then you have uh where's the rest of them there's a Wi-Fi M.2 slot uh right PCIe X4 link at the very bottom trades off with a M.2 slot so um that is, that bottom PCIe slot trades off with M2C, which is where. Okay, so that's, yeah, so this slot right here, uh, you, well, you either have this PCIe X4 or you have this. Uh, then you have M2D over here, which you give up two of your SATA ports in order to have M2D. And then M2B, I'm assuming, doesn't have any trade-offs, right? Where is M2B? Yeah, so M2B just comes right off the chipset. So this is actually a really... Because you get X4, you get X4, and... I think that's X4? On this one? So, like, you get full SSD speed on all of them, I think. Yeah, so X4, X2 support, X4, X2 support, M2D, X4, X2 support. Yeah, so you get four PCIe, like, you get four M.2s that are PCIe 4.0 by four. So that is, I think, the most you can get. I don't think, like, I think even in Gigabyte's own lineup, there isn't another motherboard that gives you that many uh, PCIe 4.0 M.2 slots. Um, and you do get dual GPU support, like, well, dual, you get crossfire support. You could also run two quadros, I guess. Like, for compute, you don't need SLI support. Um, or if you want to, like, if, if you want to attach more stuff to the CPU. Like, what you could also do is actually get, like, an M, uh, PCIe expansion card uh, that goes from X8 to more M.2 slots. And then you could have, like, a GPU and six M.2 SSDs running at PCIe 4.0 attached to this one motherboard. Um yeah, that's that's the kind of thing the X570 chipset is good for. So this is, I think, the best M.2 uh, configuration I, I, I've seen on any X570 motherboard. I'm, I'm surprised it's taken this long for us to get to this point. Because um, there's a bunch of, like, B550 motherboards that are trying to sort of do this, but they don't have the necessary lanes from the chipset to do it properly. So I think, like, yeah, this this makes... Like, if you love M.2 SSDs, this is kind of the motherboard for you, I guess. Uh, I'm assuming they also have the active OC switcher on this, because I can't imagine there's any reason not to put that on there. Right? Like, the, the Gigabyte isn't Asus. A Asus will happily remove features for just to force you to upgrade to the more expensive motherboard, but it's not really a thing that Gigabyte does a lot. Yeah, so they really do just have M.2 4.0 everywhere. Um... Yeah. Is it in the specs then? Div. Right, OC. Let's check this one, because I don't know if, like... Like, I would assume they have it on all of, on, like, all of the more expensive boards. 
Okay, so it doesn't look like it's in the specs part of the thing, so... Okay, yeah, so you have active OC tuner um, in on the Aero G motherboard. So this kind of looks like maybe the best X570 board in Gigabyte's lineup. The only thing I can complain about is there's no postcode. <laughs> Right, like if, if you're if you're doing memory overclocking and it's not booting on you, um, that's that's not going to be fun. But as a like as a daily month, yeah, there's no postcode on this, so that's my only complaint for this. But from a con connectivity perspective, I don't think it gets better than this. Um, like, also like you have the option to have your six SATA ports or your four M dot two slots. Uh, the memory topology is still the same as what you get on all the other boards, right? Which, I mean, let's just check the support. Um, oh, they don't list the memory overclocking speeds in the specs page. That's annoying. There's no memory support list. It's going to be on the same memory topology. It doesn't make sense to redesign the motherboard for, like, like cha like have a different memory topology on this compared to all the other boards that's just not a thing you really see manufacturers doing unless there's like a requirement for like ECC support or something um maybe it was even mentioned on the front page I'm not sure but yeah this is a really like impressive motherboard Yeah, I guess they're just not advertising the memory speed support on this one. Well, anyway, so that's a cool one. Um, also, I guess it's white if if you care about the, the color scheme. And uh, then we have the X570S Aorus Master. So this has now gotten upgraded to the same VRM that you get on the X570 Aorus Extreme, um, which uh, that's... That's cool. Now, the Extreme is still on an 8-layer PCB, whereas this is just on 6 layers. Not that that really makes any difference. Um, other than that, this is also this also has the 4 M.2 slots, though I think this one doesn't have them all up to the, like, same speed. Though we'll have, like, we'll check the manual um, for that. You do have a postcode on this. You have Q-Flash, you have the clear CMOS button, active OC switcher, of course. Um, so, M.2, uh, so that's the CPU one, that goes 4.0 x4. Then we have M2S, uh, M.2B, which does PCIe 4.0 x4. And we've got PCIe 4.0 X4. Wait, is that shared between them? Or... No, that sounds like they both support that, right? Like, I'm not reading that wrong. How does the arrow do it? Oh, these are li listed all separate. So now I'm not sure, because, like, here you have M2C... 4.0 x4, M2D 4.0 x4, whereas here we have M2C and D as PCIe 4.0 x4. I'm, I'm going to say they're both 4.0 x4. The thing is, the block diagram for this board kind of makes it look like this is running at x1, but that doesn't... R yeah, that doesn't make any sense. I think this block diagram is just like a mess. Th this block diagram... Because if you look at the block diagram we have here, right, we have M2B as its own separate thing. And here they've just kind of thrown it onto this bus, but there's no switch in front of it. Right? Like, so this can't be just X4 lanes. Like, th this link can't just be X4 lanes because it's like, what? How? No? Um, 
So yeah, I am taking that that this this is actually the same in like that M2B socket works the same way as it does on the uh, arrow board. And uh, here, this block diagram is just kind of confusing, and then the manual doesn't really do a great job of uh, clearing that up either, because it's just kind of like, yeah, I, I don't know. I think going forward, it would probably make sense to just standardize it that you list every single M.2 slot independent, like individually, instead of like grouping them up like this, especially if the block diagram. Also, this is even referring to different ones. Yeah, so M2B has to do 4.0, so, okay, yeah, it's it's the exact same. So you've got the, M, the same M.2 configuration as the arrow board. Uh, but unlike the arrow board, this has a postcode, which I obviously am a huge, huge fan of having a postcode. Because if you're doing a lot of overclocking, that right there um, makes life so much easier. Now, this has single BIOS. The old master had dual BIOS. Honestly, I don't think that's much of a loss. Um... Like, it really, like, there's there's no harm in that. Also, I think the arrow is also on a single BIOS. Um, actually, it's easier. To, the block diagram is just better. Yeah, you just have one BIOS chip over there. Then if we hop over here, this is the master. You've got your one BIOS chip. Um, looks like just one gig LAN? Really? Not two and a half? No, it's two and a half. Okay. So, yeah, you've got two and a half gig LAN. Um, so, actually, the arrow and this have very similar feature sets, unless this has Thunderbolt, which is a thing that they've had on some other boards. In the sort of like, oh no, they have a Thunderbolt add-in card connector, but no on board. Yeah, no on board Thunderbolt, but you do have the connector for it, but you'll have the, the connector on, on the master as well, like it's right there. So... I guess this is like, you want a master, but you want it white, and you don't care about not having a postcode, which I personally, this is just like, what is wrong with you? Though I'm also guessing this is going to be somewhat cheaper, because the VRM on this is going to be the same, like, this, I think, is the same VRM that they have on the X570S Pro AX, um, whereas this has the same VRM that you would get on the Extreme. Uh, so that's fun, because <laughs> that VRM, like, that VRM is so overpowered for, for this socket. Um... And then, yeah, you get the active OC tuner, um, XMP5400. So, yeah, all around, like, the new master is, like, it's just kind of better than the old one. <laughs> you get a better VRM. Uh, you get active OC tuner, which is cool. Uh, you get, I mean, I think this is still the same memory topology. Um, and then you get more M.2 slots than ever before. So, yeah, so that's the new X570S Aorus Master. Uh, then we have the X570S UD. Now, this actually got a pretty significant upgrade uh, compared to its predecessor because the original UD board was on a four layer PCB and it was, um, well, significantly worse at memory overclocking for that. Um, also, just having more layers makes the, the VRM run a little bit cooler. Um, as it improves power delivery efficiency. So if we compare it to the original X570 UD. Like, you can't see any memory traces on this one. You can see all of them over here, because here they actually have the, the grounding, sh like the ground shielding over the memory traces. Um, whereas here, yeah, like you can see everything because there's no shield over it. Um, and this is a four-layer board, whereas this is a six-layer board. Which, well, actually, this is a six-layer, whereas this is a four-layer, which is why they can do that now. Um, we've got the passive chi uh, passive chipset heatsink uh, instead of the old active one. And, uh, yeah, so this should have significantly better memory overclocking capabilities than its predecessor. Should also run somewhat cooler. We have a better, I think that's a better heatsink. Yeah, that's a bigger heatsink. That like they have it, the heatsink overhanging the I/O now, so got a bigger VRM heatsink. Um, so yeah, th this like this I think is the biggest like biggest upgrade they've made in the lineup. Also, this is on a twelve plus two on fifty amp power stages, where I think I believe the old one was actually still on like discrete MOSFETs, and half of them were on the back, and it like it ran pretty hot. Like, it wasn't a complete catastrophe, but it did run pretty hot. Um, 
Yeah, okay, yeah. So you just got more like your no no more MOSFETs, like power stages now, more power stages. Um So this is just like a really like this is a massive upgrade over its predecessor. Like this is so much better. Um So that's cool. Yeah, so six layer PCB now. Uh 3M.2 slots, which I don't think I don't think that's changed. Um, do you have troubleshooting LEDs on this? Oh, it looks like you don't get troubleshooting LEDs. Where did the Q flash button go? Oh, it's in the rear I.O. Yeah, so this is another one of those. It's not a 12 phase, it's a 6. <laughs> it's a 6 phase, but it's fine. Like, it's, it's much better than the old VRM. Also, they re I think they rearranged the capacitors. Um, so that's neat. Um, uh, does actually, let's, oh. okay, so this doesn't have the active OC switcher. I don't, well, let's check the manual. <laughs> let's check the manual because I'm not sure, like, I, like, I'm not sure that it necessarily needs, like, extra circuitry on the board. Um, or, like, if that circuitry is very expensive. OC. Okay, no. Because if we search the... Yeah, so, oh no, it's active OC tuner. I'm an idiot. Okay, nope, they don't have that. Okay, so that's, it's still missing that, but like other, like huge upgrade in build quality. Like this is so much better than the old board. Um, so that's neat. And you sort of have the same thing going on with the Gaming X, um, where, like, the Gaming X is basically a nicer version of the UD board. Um, and yeah, also, like, same situ like same situation, just a huge upgrade, because the old, was there even an old Gaming X? But if there was an old Gaming X, then that was still based on the, uh, UD. No, so you had the X570UD, you had the X570UD. I don't think... Wait, no, there was a Gaming X. Yeah, but the old Gaming X was just, like, it was the it was the UD board, just different, like, color scheme. So, the new Gaming X, same, like, same situation, huge upgrade, because it's based on the, the UD, which got a huge upgrade, so this also gets that huge upgrade, where it's, like, now, we, now it's on a six-layer PCB, much better VRM than what it used to have, um... Yeah, passive chipset. I still can't tell if there's any troubleshooting LEDs, which I'm kind of annoyed about. Let's see. Yeah, no, there's no troubleshooting LEDs. So that's that's kind of unfortunate. But other than that, like, huge upgrade. Like, so much better than the old boards. Um, I'm not sure if the price has gone up significantly to match the quality upgrade, but I would assume not. Um, actually, let's go, let's just go to Newegg. Like, this, this video isn't supposed to be very high effort on my part, so screw it. Um, are those not yet up? Let's check. I guess they're not up yet. Yeah, it looks like they haven't started shipping just yet. Okay, so they're still not, like, maybe PC part picker then? Yeah, okay, they're, like, or, wait, they, they better not have added, like, an X570S chipset, because that's not actually a chipset. Okay, no, yeah, they're, they're just not available yet, so I wonder if that's going to translate, like, the, the, like, because I'm thinking about this, like, wait a minute, <laughs> a huge upgrade to everything, did they raise the price? Um, maybe, like, these might be more expensive than their predecessors, now that, now that I think of it, but I would hope not, because that's kind of... Well, at the same time, we've kind of had every, like prices creeping up in the entire 
I think the idea might be that they're going to raise the price point on these and you're supposed to get a B550 alternatively. Which I think is kind of sensible because, like, the main reason to get X570 is if you're going to have a lot of M.2, like, PCIe 4.2 M.2 SSDs. Um, I mean, 4.0 M.2 SSDs, right? Um, so if you're not going to get a bunch of expensive SSDs, why are you buying an X570 motherboard? Um and if you're buying a bunch of expensive SSDs, why do you need a cheap motherboard? And that's it, isn't it? Like, that's all the boards they've they've uh, released. It's just like you have a new master with more M.2 slots than ever before. Uh, you have a new uh, X570S Aero G. You have a new Aorus Pro. And then there's a new UD and a new Gaming X. Um, yeah, and the Gaming X gets a somewhat bigger heatsink than, than the, the UD does. Um, apparently not the same memory topology that they have on the other boards, which is, I mean, 5100 plus is still really strong. I'm kind of wondering, did they release a Q memory QVL for these? No, <laughs> of course not. Um, yeah, so that's kind of the, the Gigabyte X570S lineup. I mean, I don't know what the prices are supposed to be yet, but in terms of the hardware, like, the UD is way better than the old UD. Like, we've gone from Gigabyte's favorite flavor of garbage discrete MOSFETs. There was a lot of them, so it wasn't that bad, but they, like, power, th these power stages relative to those MOSFETs, it's like, a, like, totally different level of, of, well, efficiency. Um, they, they are not in, like, not even close to each other in terms of performance. Uh, then the Gaming S just sort of ends up with that same upgrade, uh, which I didn't check the rear I.O., but I can't imagine it being different from the UD. Yeah, no. So. Then you get the Arrow, which is just all of the M.2 slots, but no postcode, and then the Master has all of the M.2 slots and the postcode. So, let's just go to the key features so that I don't have to load this up. Also, is this board kind of blue, or is that just the lighting in that photo? I think it's supposed to be gray. Um, yeah, so just across the board, like, we like X570S for Gigabyte is basically, we remove the chipset fan, we added the active OC tuner to the Pro, the Aero G, and the Master. Um, so you now might be able to get, like, the active OC tuner at a price point lower than, like, the, the Dark Hero from Asus. Um, so I'm assuming Asus is probably, like, Asus is planning some X570S boards as well, so they're probably going to be, like, putting the dynamic OC switcher on more motherboards too. Um, that's a, that's a really interesting feature, though. I'd like, I'd like, I can't, like, I, yeah, I really want to play with that. Especially now that it's available on more motherboards than a $400, like, extreme overclocking board, which, my opinion, was kind of silly. Like, I'd love to see this on B550. <laughs> this would be so cool on, on B550. Because, um, like, like for a top-of-the-line B550 board, I think this, this would actually be also really... Like, it would just be cool to have that on an even cheaper motherboard with, like, less M.2 uh, M functionality. Because that's really all X570 really... Like, that's all X570 really does. Um, so yeah, massive build quality up upgrades to the Gaming X and the UD, then the Pro has, you know, we have the Active OC tuner, no fan, new better VRM, uh, Aero G is, like, this is just a straight up new board, um, but mostly, like, as far as I can tell, it seems to be like a Pro AX with more M.2 slots, um, and then we get the Master, which is just like... We added a postcode, and you like this is an extreme light. Like that's I, that's which is actually the intention of the master boards is like to be a, an X570 extreme light. So extreme like extreme boards, but cheaper. Um, and yeah, and this does a really good job of that. Like it stole the VRM off of the extreme. So um, and that that was like previously the only difference between the master and the extreme was just like the extreme 
had the the like even more powerful VRM than the master, and it was like, well, now they have the same VRM, and then it's just like, so I'm, yeah, I really don't know why you would be getting the X570 Extreme at this point because it's like this also has a passive chipset, this has the same VRM, it has a postcode, memory overclocking on on them is the same, like, and this one's way cheaper, um, so. Yeah, I don't know how much cheaper, but, like, the thing is, the Extreme is $700, so it would be really hard for this to, to start, like, to, to, for this to be as expensive as the Extreme. Um, there's, there's a lot of room to be significantly cheaper in, right? Like, even at $500, this would be significantly cheaper than an Extreme. Um, yeah, so that's kind of Gigabyte's X570S S motherboard lineup. Just, uh, um just better than the old X570 boards that they made. I'm not, well, the only thing I don't know is like, is, is the chipset temperature going to be significantly higher, but like that, that, yeah, that's, that's the only thing I'm not sure about. Um, but I also don't care because I don't use M.2 SSDs. <laughs> so for me, the chipset is just like, well, I've got SATA ports. As long as those work, I'm fine. Um, so yeah, that's that's it for the video. Um, thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comments section below if you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking. I have a Patreon. There's a link to that down in the description below. There's also the AHOC Teespring store where you can pick up shirts, stickers, posters, uh, you know, the usual YouTuber merch. And uh, both the Patreon and Teespring help out immensely with running the channel, so it would be much appreciated if you'd check them out. And that's it for the video. So thank you for watching and goodbye.